So family, we are glad to be with you once again, getting into part two. Uh, there's something you should know. And so last time we was talking about um, arts, matters of the heart. Right. And so we're going to continue to talk about that and share a little something with you. You know, we hope that it blesses you something from the, our heart about a little something that happened with us before we got into uh, part two this time. So. Right. So uh, it's kind of funny because we actually find that sometimes we have instances where we can actually put real life situation to mm -hmm. some of the things that we're talking mm -hmm. about. And since our last vlog, we actually had a little matter of the heart that kind of caused a little bit of disturbance for us. Um, so that actually allowed for us to really kind of learn and grow from this particular um, topic. And so um, my husband, uh, you, many of you guys know that he is an engineer and so, um, he works a lot with government contracts. And so they have different times, um, of the year where they will get super, super busy. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, we get in our routine, I'm, I'm a very regimented routine person. And so we get in our routine of our date nights and our opportunity to spend time together. And for me, one of my love languages is quality time. Like I love mm -hmm. to spend quality time with him. Um, he's my high school sweetheart. So we've been together for years and years. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's my best friend. And so whenever we get into these seasons where he gets super busy at work and we cannot spend that quality time, it really starts to bug me. And so, you know, I, here in the last couple of weeks, he's gotten super busy at work. And so we've not had any time to really kind of just hang out with each other. And so when that happens, you know, deep down within myself, I start to get a little, I, I won't say concerned, but um, I know that I'm that kind of person that really loves quality time. So when I'm not getting my quality time, I start to feel some kind of way. Mm -hmm. So I, it makes me feel neglected. It makes me feel unloved. And so I try to approach him with that, um, conversation and say, Hey, you know, this is how I'm feeling. Um, and I try to do it in a way that doesn't come off as if I'm complaining. Um, but he, you know, we've been in this place before and he always reminds me, he's like, you know, we're going to go through these valleys. We're going to go through these ebbs and flows. And so you just kind of have to have your mind set to recognize that it's only for a season and then things are going to be back to normal. But for me, because I'm so regimented and routine, um, it just kind of feels like everything is crumbling down. And so we had a situation where, um, basically I was like, Hey, you know, I'm just kind of feeling like you don't like me. I was like, I know you love me, but I just feel like you don't like me. And he was like, like, what, like, what are you talking about? And I, I'm like, you know, I said, I'm just kind of feeling like I'm not important to you. Um, and that led to uh, a lot of different things coming out. So a lot of, uh, you know, what, what I felt like were unresolved issues coming out that mm -hmm. were deep within my heart, um, you know, saying things or whatever and stuff that probably neither one of us really meant. And, um, just, it, it just did not turn out well. We ended up in a place where, um, we got to just not talking and we were silent treatment. Right. Um, and the funny thing about the silent <laughs> treatment is, is you feel like you're hurting the other person. And for me, you know, I think he mentioned in one of the previous vlogs that I'm a person that likes to come back and, and get things right. And that is me. But for mm -hmm. this particular episode, because I was so upset, um, I was like, working overtime trying not to come back and talk to show him. him like i'm gonna show him that i'm not gonna come back and talk to him whatever and he's the kind of person that he can he could he really has the stamina to go for a while <laughs> and not talk to anybody so so i'm struggling and i mean i'm getting crooks in my neck my head is hurting all kinds of stuff or whatever because i'm just stressing trying to do this and he was just like no 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 you know it's like, like, nothing, like that. it just seemed like nothing was going on with him and i'm struggling it, well so. let me interject with a second here okay. and say because what happened in the midst of that you had the one incident and typically right. that's how it happens right when you're in the midst of that, then it's a compounding situation. Yeah. And so that incident, when she felt that way and expressed that, and I tried to express to her, okay, I get you, I get you but guess what? We're going to be all right. You which, know? which really came across as what he's always said. Oh, it's going to get better. And I was like, okay, so now we're right back to him not hearing me all over again. So that yeah. just did not land well with me to try to get things back on and the I right And I knew foot. it, but I knew that. But the issue was, the compounding factor was we had another thing happen where I had, in the midst of that business, had to go out to work and I didn't want to wake her. Yeah. And so I didn't say... Uh, goodbye, like kiss her in the midst of her sleep and say goodbye. And I didn't want to wake her. And so then that issue came back around to this because I had to leave 
um, in the midst of our disagreement, but I made sure I said goodbye. And I'm going to come say goodbye. And she was like, not <laughs> want to say goodbye, didn't turn around to say goodbye. I was like, yeah, okay, go ahead and go kind of thing. And so I held on to that. I was like, oh, okay, really? Yeah. So that, that just compounded things. So. Right. <laughs> so ultimately, we ended up in this period of silent treatment, which really did not help anything because... If you remember, the reason why we were there in the first place was because we weren't spending any quality time. So that ended up causing, uh, we didn't get on a date night that weekend. Mm -hmm. We weren't talking to each other for a couple of days, just kind of, you know, the reluctant, you know. He, a couple of days. Like, it was, it was... It was that what we need to have conversation. <laughs> but other than that, like just trying to hang out with each other, it was not really like... <laughs> hey, let me just hang out with you. So, so ultimately, what it just ended up in us not being in the right place, and yeah. so it really did not accomplish anything because quality time was what the main factor was, right. and that's what we weren't doing. Yeah. yeah. So, I, it, so, and it it really just flows back into, um, you know, recognizing at that particular time that my heart for him, even though I love him. Um, just where I was, I wasn't feeling good about us in my heart. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, yeah. I would say, you know, and what happened with this particular thing, the reason why we shared it with you though, is because it just was confirmation to us as the subject matter in which we're talking about yeah. and how it was just positive confirmation of the word is the matter of the heart. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we did we did have this verse already lined out before that happened, but um I think we didn't know exactly how much it was gonna be fruitful <laughs> to, to, to what we're talking about. Yeah. So we're gonna read that so you can see exactly what the word is saying about it and we continue to talk about these matters of the heart. So it's in Matthew the thirteenth chapter and starting at the fifteenth verse. So what right. does it say? So it says, For this people's heart has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. And so you can see how powerful that is when we're talking about this subject, because um, what, what it began to highlight to us is really you can grab from that, that situation, first off, kind of almost like a, a the essence of a heart that's failing. Yeah. Really? Right? Because, yeah. you know, you can hardly hear. Right. Eyes closed. Right. You know, heart in a position of, of uh, not receiving. Right. Basically. Mm -hmm. But I think it impressed upon us these three categories that we want to kind of talk from, which was a stony heart. Stony heart. Hard. A callous heart. Uh-huh. That's rough. And a tender heart. You know, so right. when you think about it in, in that way, you kind of think about you, you know, that this is alluding to understanding and like our personal story right. showed that there was definitely some issues, issues with understanding. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. That when you look at the stony heart, you know, that's one where there's no understanding. Right. Right. Yeah. And complete. then you, you look at the uh, callous heart, you're looking at a heart where there's some misunderstanding. Right. All right, and then of course the tender heart is one where there's understanding. Right. Right. Absolutely. And so I think what we want to kind of impress upon you with looking at those scenarios, a lot of times in marriage and being married to Christ, you know, we have those ebbs and flows in the area of going between a a callous heart and a, uh, a tender heart. Right. You know, and you know, I, I, we had a little bit of concern even just trying to talk about that because we know. As believers, we have a new heart, right? And we do know that, yeah, there's some people who are in, who are in marriage, who entered into it without Christ or without a new heart, right? Uh, don't mean that they weren't married, but they came into that situation with a, a probably a rocky heart, stony heart, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so we know that having those kind of heart conditions creates issues for us, you know, it creates uh, a lot of misunderstanding. And hardly little to no understanding when you had a stony heart, but definitely some misunderstanding. And it highlights that it's not a condition of our new heart that's the issue. Right. Um, when you think about how the Bible talks about things, like referring to um, 
I think Psalms um, 119 mm -hmm. and 11, where it talks about, you know, having hid the word in my heart right. that I may not sin against you. You know, it's talking about how we need to get that word in, treasure it in. And then it also, like in the Proverbs versions that we shared in, in the part one, it brought, in, it brought into the picture the, the mind mm -hmm. and how important that mind is because the mind is what gives us an a understanding. Right. It plays a, a part in understanding the word. Right. You know? Yeah. And so it puts us in that place where we got to recognize that we're just going through the process with our new hearts of renewing that mind and working through those callous areas. You know? Right. right? Yeah. It's funny that you say that because it makes me think about what I talked about the last time when we we're talking about, you know, your emotions, those feelings that we get or whatever and stuff as part of your heart. And then out of those emotions comes the thought process. What are we going to do with this now? Mm -hmm. So if I, if I feel bad about something or whatever and stuff, how am I processing that to make my next move, which becomes my will, right? right? How do I act out of whatever that situation is? So that's kind of what we're talking about there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, we want to just share that with you because we believe that as married people, um, yeah, we need to be concerned that between each other, but we also need to make sure that we, we keep in the picture who's our part of our marriage as well, which is Christ. Right. right. And Absolutely. so when you start looking at a, um, looking at a, a callous heart, Mm -hmm. And recognizing that that verse says that you hardly hear. And what kind of things come to your mind about that? So hardly hear. I mean, if my heart is calloused or whatnot, it's not that it's hard. So it's not that I can't hear, but it's that I really just want to, for lack of better terms, have my own way, right? Mm -hmm. My desires, my passions, what I want in this situation. I know what the right thing is to do. But I just don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be obedient. Um, and then, you know, eventually you get to that place where, you know, everything starts to break down. And it's like, oh, you know, I, I knew I was wrong, but I just didn't want to do the right thing. And so you yeah. kind of operate in that. You know that the Holy Spirit will convict us in times like that, right? Mm -hmm. Which allows us to know that our heart is not hard because when it's hard, he, there's no conviction. We don't hear it. We don't know God's voice. We're not trying to have anything to do with it. But in the callous heart, we know it. And mm -hmm. so when he convicts us, you know, if we're Christians or whatever, and we're really trying to follow after him, our mind comes back to, okay, I got to do what's right. So, yeah. yeah, I think what it highlights too, that there's definitely that challenge of hearing his gentle voice, yeah. you know, listening yeah. to it and, and keeping it in our heart and mind. And I think when we were trying to encourage others about their words in part one, I think it tells us that we probably put ourselves in a place where we lack the ability to receive that word mm -hmm. that comes from them that is loving yeah, so that we can have it just hold into our heart, you right. know, and and use that. His motivation to continue to work through our challenges and be together. Right. Well, like you said, with our spouse, you know, for me, with that particular situation, my heart was a little bit calloused in the fact that we've been here before. So mm -hmm. we've already had this conversation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, has anything changed? So it's almost like here we are once again, and you're saying this again. And, you know, you very well could have a different meaning to it at this point, a different motivation to it at this point. But because I've heard it before, mm -hmm. my mind is like, I'm not really trying to hear that you know and then over time you just kind of go okay well you know i guess he'll have to show me you yeah. know so mm -hmm. you know and i think the other part of the verse is talking about there that they have closed their eyes and i believe that was very uh, appealing to me and, and, and interesting because it it shows that it wasn't necessarily about god blinding folks mm -hmm. that they don't see right it's about folks choosing willfully closing their eyes to things. So when you think about that in the context of the marriage relationship, how can that look? So, I, you, you know, in the marriage relationship, I don't even know if I would necessarily so much say it's closing your eyes so much as you got your eyes focused on everything other than what it should be focused on. Mm -hmm. So there's a tendency, and especially for ladies, because we're always like, oh, you're supposed to love me the way Christ loved the church, right? Um, and, and really it comes down to, I'm so busy looking out there at what this guy is doing for his wife or whatever until I'm missing what it is that I have right here, mm -hmm. right? All the good things that have already been done and all those things that have already been said because I'm too focused on what it is that I don't have. Right. Um, and the other thing, of course, is is not even focusing as much on your word. So that's the thing. Sometimes we have these unmet expectations or whatever and stuff because we're so focused on trying to get all of it from 
um, the spouse. And really, you know, it should be that we're focusing our eyes on Christ, right? Yeah. Because then he's going to soften our hearts to be able to have us see what your true heart is saying in the situation so that I can be able to act on that and not on my own feelings and cares. Yeah, that's good. I think um, it, it, as you was talking, I was remembering when we shared in Proverbs, you know, and Proverbs was talking about keep my words in your sight, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think you're seeing this, this strong connection and why all these, po these parts are important and right. getting it in our heart, keeping it in our sight. Because when we get into those challenging times, we need to have heard that word, those kind words from our spouse. Right. We need to have heard the, the truth from Jesus' word right. about who he is, being gentle and loving mm -hmm. and humble. And that's what Matthew uh, 11 refers to. Right. Uh, Jesus talking about how gentle and humble he is mm -hmm. in heart. You know, that right. we need to be able to keep that in mind about our spouses. Right. You know, we've seen them, we know them, and we need to learn to continue to see them right. as we should as ourselves. Right. When we do that in these hard times, we'll be able to press forward. We'll be able to keep in mind the love that we have for one another. Right. You know? Yeah. I liken that to when Christ, you know, when he does something, when he delivers us out of a situation, right? Mm -hmm. We're always like, oh, you know, if you just get me out of this guy, I won't ever do blah, blah, blah again. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and the same thing, you know, and then, I'll, you know, we get down the road into another situation and then we forget all about the fact that he just brought us through this one. I don't know what's <laughs> going to happen now, you know, and we're whining, right? <laughs> right. It's the right. same thing in relationship. You know, just last week you go out, you buy me some flowers or whatever. So oh, he's the best husband ever. He bought me flowers. And then this week we get into a situation or an argument or something like that or whatever. And it's like, you don't ever do anything, mm -hmm. you know, I forgot <laughs> about the flowers from last week. So right. trying to be able to make sure that you always reflect back on those good moments, because the one thing the board tells us is that in, in marriage, in life, yeah. we're going to have troubles, right? So, right. but we have to be able to focus on the good in the spouse. We have to focus on the Christ in our spouse or whatever and stuff. And we have to be able to reflect back on those good times or whatever to keep pushing us forward. Yeah. So yeah. ultimately, you know, that's what we wanted to really get across to you guys. Mm -hmm. Even when you think about these categories of the heart or the heart, recognize that a lot of the time, the things that are occurring, they're not real intentional and they really right. just a misunderstanding right. in that. I think we want to encourage you as well, just to always find yourself in a place where when you have those good thoughts about your spouse and you have those loving memories, Use them to actually vocalize that because yeah, the word tells us to speak. Yeah. And it's talking about how important the word is. So right. his word in us mm -hmm. gives us that tender heart, right. gives us the right understanding of who he is because he always communicating that he's gentle and humble in heart. And when we have great things about our spouse, like appreciative things about what they do, how they show love or thoughts about your future, because right. that vision to me is about keeping a good perspective on your future together. Right. You know, being able to see life and have life uh, be fulfilling together. Right. When yeah. you have that in mind and those thoughts are yours alone at times, share them with your spouse. Yeah. That'll grow your connection. That'll keep you guys um, actually, you know, talking about something worthwhile. Yeah. Such that you can press forward, you know, and fall back on and continue to stand on. Because, right. you, you know, the foundation is so important. Absolutely. And we build like that within our hearts and with our mind. We can't be shaking. You That's know, right. we can be stirred. Right. We won't be shaking. That's right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely am one of those people that likes to kind of put into the atmosphere what I'm feeling. And I, you know, I think a lot of times more of the ladies don't have as much of an issue with that. Mm -hmm. Guys tend to have more of an right. issue with that. But let me just put out there, you know, the one thing you got to remember is is you know you may not be saying it to your spouse but somebody else could be saying it to them so just make sure that you're putting that good those good jews into the atmosphere if that's mm -hmm. what you want to call them because uh it makes all the difference in how how they see you and how you see them all right amen mm -hmm. so amen. And we hope that uh, you know referring to those verses that you hear how important you know the word and the heart is yeah and that strong connection between mind and heart being there, there has to be something that's continuing to be worked through and trusting God to continue to make you hard, make you soft where it needs to be. Cause we come in with baggage and things right. of that nature. Uh, though we got the new heart, we got to work on this old mind yeah. and continue to work and, and mature in our ability to communicate that love and know that love and, and not allow ourselves to be shaken in the midst of the trying times. So we thank you for just hearing our story, yeah. taking the time to listen to uh, what God's word is saying. And we hope it builds up, you know, the love that you guys have between each other, that you'll be able to 
to overcome a callous, definitely a stony heart if you got that. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I know many of our followers are not in that boat. You yeah. know, we definitely had to tend the heart and we're working on this old mind. So Amen. we want to pray and yeah. bless God for this opportunity. Amen. Mm-hmm. So, Father God, we come to you right now, Lord God. We ask that you would just continue to work on our hearts, Lord God, as these matters come forth, Lord God, and we know that they will, Lord God. Help us to not just hide your word in our heart, Lord God, but to let it flow out of our hearts, Lord God, to our spouses and to each and every one that's around us, Lord God. Help us to continue to stay focused on you, Lord God, to keep our eyes fixed on you, to open our ears, Lord God, and to allow our heart to flow out into, Lord God, the life of our marriage, Lord God, to love on each other the way that you called us to, Lord God, and to always keep us connected to you we bless you now and forevermore and we thank you for this word in jesus name we pray amen amen Amen. i'm gonna thank you guys for checking in and checking up to go beyond Beyond mary Mary.